Welcome back to Rackspace's live coverage from Austin, Texas at the Tech Gathering of the Year. You know, the place where Twitter found its wings. Foursquare checked in and Siri found her voice. It's Robert Scoble and friends live. The open cloud. Hi, I'm Robert Scoble and you're at the Rackspace uh, open cloud experience. And today I have uh, some really good old friends uh, that I've known for years talking about the world of celebrity communities and uh, what's going on in the open web. We go way back. So uh, who should I start with, Rocky? It's Rocky's behind the controllers, by the way, uh, running our TriCaster. Chris Liu. Ta start here? OK. Uh, Chris Liu. Well, who are you? Uh, I am uh, Chris and Chris. Yeah. <laughs> no, Chris Liu. <laughs> Nice. Chris Liu, CEO and uh, co-founder of Echo, and uh, I can see you guys have expanded uh, the Rackspace services to include a bar and grill. Excellent. It, you got to get revenue somehow, it's right? How, it's <laughs> how it rolls. We, we'll monetize you however <laughs> we can. <laughs> if you can put an API on a hamburger, yeah, you got it, buddy. So uh, yeah, I'm Chris Liu, I'm CEO and co-founder of Echo, and um, we haven't been uh, together in what? Six months, nine months, time yeah. to catch up, time to talk a little tech, a little future of the web, yeah. looking fun. And with me is my you mate. Well, who are you? Yeah, I'm uh, Chris Saad, I'm co-founder of Echo and uh, chief strategy officer. And Is yeah. that what you do? Okay, that's, that's great, I, yeah. excellent, yeah. nice. <laughs> Yeah, I knew so I'd I find out sooner or later. Party all day long. What are you talking about? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Life's a party if you're doing what you love. So, dang, that actually was pretty good. It's true. <laughs> I don't see. I don't work. So, <laughs> <we're good>. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and I get paid for it. It's I love great. It. It's great. But uh, let's uh, let's talk about what's going on at South by. We've been to South by. How many South bys have you guys been to? This is my fifth yeah. year, I think. Fifth year. Since I've yeah. been, to, been to at least ten. Jeez. Yeah, at least a, at least a nickel. Yeah, at yeah. least five. Five. Yeah, yeah th it's interesting because um, maybe two years ago, you heard a lot of it's jumped the shark. Yeah. And I think really what happened was uh, the, the early years were very sort of deep thought, intellectual, but not a lot of prop, uh, product yet and not a lot of brands had signed on. Yeah. And what that, that jumping of the shark really is, is the mass market coming into South By. And it's not dead, it's just uh, changing the guard. And so you get a lot of brands here, you get a lot of uh, mature technology companies, uh, and I find it just as exciting as it was three, four, five years ago. So. Yeah, it's, yeah, and it's if you have something crazy. to say, right? It, people want to launch their startup here, they want to do the next Twitter event, and it's not going to happen that way. Twitter was around a year before you know, that thing hit traction at South By. Yeah. You can't launch your startup here, it's too noisy. Yeah. But what you can do is have a lot of great conversations, uh, and if you have something valuable to say, people will, is that, is will that, buy it. Is that South By code for a lot of partying? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. You know, we, we, we try to squeeze some partying in between the intellectual discourse, you know, it's, uh, it's hard. It is. Uh, so, um, what's, what I'm noticing here at South by, well, first of all, when I started coming here, there's 500 people, and now it's, I hear there's 200,000 people in town. Whoa. Many of whom don't have badges, but there's a lot of people here for badges, 40,000 people with badges on, right? It's crazy numbers. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I jumped the sharks, because the people who, who we're he here with 500 people. We're used to just hanging out at a picnic table and having a yeah. conversation. It, it was more serendipitous, I think, some years ago. You could really see a lot of people, and now I think with 200,000, it's harder to find people. Yeah. It's, just, it's just too blocked up. That's why you need a back channel like GroupMe. Yeah. I, the thing is now that I'm on like five back channels, so it's like a, a torrent yeah. of let's go here and let's go there and what have you. And yeah. I think to- no, We uh, need a, a party auction service. So that, you know, okay, I'm at the path party, I, I can get two people in, and it'll cost yes. you $100. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah 101, 102. Because <laughs> nice. that, that's the problem, is when you find a really great party, you yeah. can't get anybody yeah. else in, right? Because yeah. you are in, but, yeah. Well, well South By really, uh, I think for those that sort of come here and try to run around, they're, they spend their time in transit, right? Yeah. And uh, what we try to do, at least, is... Uh, go and if it feels good where we are, we stay and we hang out there and really enjoy that particular party because there's so much going on, you really can't do it all anyway. So uh, find a place if you like it, stay and if not, move along. The yeah. other thing that I'm noticing is celebrities are coming in. Last night oh, I, yeah. was, I was at the uh, Spotify party and uh, right yep. next to me was Ashton Kutcher, right? Who's and he? No, he's, just, he's, yeah. he's this cute guy. Is he on uh, Twitter? He plays sort of a loot, aloof guy on some <laughs> comedy show. I don't sure. know. You know. My wife likes him. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, a, he's a really great guy. He, he, the person he plays on TV is, is very different than who he is in real life. He's very yeah. smart, very tied in, and is an investor. In all it's interesting to see the 
the public persona, what, what my niece thinks is Ashton Kutcher and what, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, we think of him because he was just hanging out and investing in We had a, uh, a panel yesterday. It was uh, Echo's case study of uh, WWE, and uh, it was off the hook. They brought John Cena yeah. as the stardom, right? He's got 14 million Facebook followers and fans. This is the worldwide uh, Res entertainment, it yeah. wrestling entertainment That's right. corporation. Yeah. Right. yeah. So t tell me the numbers involved here. Cause you were sort of writing down the numbers before we started out. Oh, yeah. WWE is off the hook. They have more uh, engagement, more Facebook and Twitter followers than all NFL teams combined. They have more than all uh, Major League Baseball teams combined. And they own demographic after demographic. It's like... Uh, more uh, density in 30 to 40 year old women than Oprah and it just goes on and on and so they're they're truly a media powerhouse but they're also switched on with social right yeah. they've learned how to do second screen uh, TV they've uh, brought social into the uh, into the venues like uh, using the jumbotrons for throwing up photos and the whole bit and so uh, they're not just sort of entertainment around wrestling they're a true business and it's uh, it's exciting to work with those guys yeah and so what do you guys do for these uh, with these celebrities what, what what's your business for that <laughs> no, in seriousness I so so wwe.com for example was declining 60 percent over the lo over two or three years was it or a number of years anyway and uh, and so we came in and, and worked with them and their, their core team with echoes technology and we were able to double their page views and um, you know and just you know take it to the next level put the the content into the jumbotrons, into the stadiums, on the air, and all. And why? Stuff. Why is adding an interactive area? Why does it double page views? What What is it about yeah. humans that want to chat with each yeah. other about yeah. their stars or engage with the star? What, what's well, going on? There? There's probably plenty of like deep psychological reasons for this, and, and there are. Um, but let's just look at very practical things, right? Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Quora. These, you know, these sites have taught a billion users a new mm -hmm. kind of internet, yep. right? It's real time and it's social. Now there's all sorts of psychological reasons why that works, but it works. It's practical, it's proven, it's there. And so what the rest of the web looks like black and white compared to that. It yeah. looks like a boring ghost town. Yeah. And so what we've focused on doing at Echo is democratizing that class of experience, real time social experiences for the rest of the web. And so now when you hit WWE, it is real time and social also. Uh, Washington Post is real time and social also and Lady Gaga and on and on and on and on and so the reason it works is when they were hitting the site before it was like watching a black and white television show you, you want to switch the channel right now when you hit the site it, it feels like your home it feels like your Facebook and your Twitter experience uh, and so it's, it's really not that it, the math isn't that hard if you have a crap experience people leave if you have a good experience uh, that's the state of the art they'll stick around and hang out with their friends so who do you work for? Who's your customers? Is it everybody or is it just celebrities? It, soon it will be everyone. Uh, we're, we're on <laughs> the, the path. entire world. <laughs> so uh, right now we're very big in media, right? We started out, that was our home base and you have companies like WWE and uh, NBC Universal and ABC and on and on. Uh, and then we've also broadened a bit. We have NASDAQ and so on and so forth. And, and, and people say, well, why would NASDAQ need social? It's stock symbols, right? Uh, but if you consider any piece of content, a primary unit, it has a life, right? So the FB, Facebook stock symbol, right? Has people tweeting about it. It has people writing blog posts about it. It has people predicting about it. It has people upset. It has new products, it, new services, etc. And so at Echo, what we're really trying to do is take that canonical unit, whether it's a, a singer or a stock symbol or a product, and bring the entire global conversation around it and add engagement metaphors. So like, if, I, if I write about Facebook over on Twitter and say uh, Facebook sucks or whatever I'm gonna say. Oh my God. <laughs> I like Facebook, I think Facebook's cool. But I see people, you know, ha everybody has an opinion about Facebook, whether you think I'm rocks or So I write that on Twitter, does it come over to Echo? And does it come into the conversation somehow? Or? Yeah, that- Because you I, sort of started your life by being a little bit more of an aggregator of all these right. social things all over, and that, now you're uh, going, to, I don't know what direction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's tell you some of the secret sauce on that. The the concept of bringing a tweet or a Facebook status update back to an object is uh, technology we brought out two years ago. So that that's okay, but it's very old school. What we're now bringing is what we call new social gestures to the object. Right, a tweet is a social gesture, but it's not the only one. When I go on Nasdaq, I should have give me some sample of right. Here. When I go on Nasdaq, I should have stock-specific social gestures. I predict the stock's going up. I think the CEO should be replaced. 
I think this should be added to my wish list, etc., etc. The, the company just released a press release, right? right? Just the, the video. There's a new, um, there's a new estimate for their earnings. Right. These are all social activities, social gestures that are unique to NASDAQ. And so we, we don't just want to, aggregating the data in, as Chris said, was interesting two years ago, but can be quite noisy. And what's more interesting is not aggregating the data or borrowing the data from Twitter or Facebook, but borrowing their best ideas, their best interaction metaphors. So a news feed on a website instead of a hierarchical newspaper layout, right? It's a site ticker on a website instead of um, not surfacing that activity at all or giving it to Facebook only. So a notifier on a website. Do brands need to curate these things? Do they need to, uh, you know? No, because... The, how do you keep the noise from coming in to the... So again, yeah. Facebook has demonstrated this in very clear, stark terms, right? When you're on Facebook, you have a news feed of what's happening on the site. Yeah. You have a site ticker what's for what's happening on the site. You have a notifier. By the way, they're getting rid of the ticker. For uh, I, I have the new, the new uh, sure. page design, right. which I like a lot, but the ticker mm. is being... Minimize. Minimize. Okay. Right. <laughs> it's like one thing less thing, you know, it's like, right. oh, dude. But, but, but tickers and notifiers and news feeds do not exist on the rest of the web. Yeah. And they should. Yeah. And they should because they work, right? And so there's no need for curation there. By, by following users or following uh, a subject or following a celebrity within the context of that site, the user is curating their own experience. The only thing we're doing is we're adding the, t the ticker, the notifier, the news feed, the mm -hmm. comments, the uh, n you know, the all that, stuff, the chat, the social TV, right. baked it into their .com. We, we kind of look at it as a, a regular static website has a lack of liquidity with social gestures. There's not a lot out going on. So okay, so you you maybe can leave a comment, right? I and gotta go to Burning Man to understand <laughs> what's going on here. Man. So okay, fair enough. But if we take uh, ESPN for example, yeah. which is uh, a longtime Echo customer, and you can add a whole host of social gestures and share them out. Okay. So it could be like predicting a game. It could be a calling a play. It could be complaining about a, a, a score or a ref or what have you. And so. If, CNN, or if ESPN adds these social gestures around the object, whether it's a, a sports figure or what have <coughs> you, then there's, and you share that stuff out and you display it in trending modules and tickers, all of a sudden the site pops. Facebook uh, generates roughly a trillion social gestures a day, yeah. right? And it's Things that like likes, ping, comments, ping, ping, yeah, birthday, shares. video, whatever. So the, the entire, let, let me say it this way. Facebook has one page one what we call web page right now, but yet people stay on it 30 or 40 hours a month. Yep. If I had told you 10 years ago that I will develop a website that has one page and people will spend that much time on it, they would have thought you were crazy. But it is, the web page is shifting to a frame, almost like TV, and it's I can a web touch. App. Yeah, it's a web app. I can touch things and things come back and touch me. Oh, yeah. And it's that engagement or interactive model that what I'm calling liquidity of social gestures that does it. And so Echo comes into a, a customer, right? And yeah. we help lay in these gestures so there's liquidity on the one hand. And on the other hand, if you look at ESPN, for example, beautiful company, right? If you go up to their headquarters, there is literally a bullpen of 100 mathematicians, you know, stats on you know when the guy ties his shoe left first right he scores a home run and whatever that data can be atomized like tweets and distributed and shattered out so that it can be a trigger point back to espn.com so part of it is native gestures <coughs> and then part of it is unlocking and atomizing the data that the publisher already has wow. so uh you guys have been doing a lot of work <laughs> we've been busy we've been yeah. busy i mean now obviously now we're taking a break yeah. It, but it takes, it takes a stack of technologies to make this happen, right? And, and something I've heard you talk a lot about is the need for new kinds of databases, yeah. niche databases. And that's essentially what's at the heart of what we built. So we have a thing called Echo Stream Server, and it is a real-time database. So we can capture, store, and serve at massive scale these activities, right? I just rated, I just commented, I just I mean, liked. There, just Twitter alone has a, a billion tweets every 36 hours or so, right? Right. What, what kind of data flows are you seeing, and, and is it still going up exponentially? It's going up. Because Twitter's it's going up exponentially still, even with yeah. a billion tweets every 36 hours. It's crazy. Yeah, well, the, thing that, the thing that we oftentimes forget is, you know, ESPN has billion page views a month, right? These guys are massive. They have a TV network, right? And so they have a, a really huge community. They haven't been given the tools on the dot-com to create these tweets, these gestures, these activities. And so when you turn those capabilities on, ESPN starts generating, you know, tons and tons of activities uh, per second. And so, you know, we're serving um, 
know, we're serving a billion and a half page views a month right now. Uh, and that's, that's a lot of real-time yeah. streams uh, with a lot of items in them. Uh, and these are things that are happening on ESPN.com, not tweets, not Facebook posts. These are activities happening on ESPN. New forum topics, new uh, comments, new likes, new um, predictions, new scores, you know, all that sort of stuff. Wow. Yeah. So the infrastructure you're, you're building is probably pretty crazy. I, I, I interviewed the guy who runs Gannett, right? Yep. And he's getting the fire hose feed off of Twitter, and he had to build a, a huge amount of infrastructure just to deal with that flood of no, that's stuff, right. right? And you're, you're probably seeing these things go up exponentially. So if you have, I don't know how many instances you have on the cloud, or what's your infrastructure like? What, so uh, we're split. We have uh, AWS. Uh, for, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll get you into the open clouds. Oh, did I, I'm getting kicked by Rocky at the table. <laughs> no, we use uh, <laughs> no, laugh from the crowd. I love it. So we use a, a third-party hosting service <laughs> <laughs> for the the vast preponderance of our serving. Yeah. However, the, those tend to be small, medium, large, and for certain indexing, we need extra large, and so we have our own data center, yeah. and that sort of front ends certain processes and so on and By so forth. By the way, that's our pitch now, right? With, with uh, OpenStack, we're really changing who Rackspace is. Uh, you know, with Amazon, you're stuck. You, you, great, if it works for you, it's great, but like a piece of your business needs to be on your own data center or somewhere else or at another competitor or, you know, you yeah. want some freedom. You know, with OpenStack, you can run your, OpenStack on your own data center or on a competitor of Rackspace. Yeah, we've uh, been talking, you and I, about Open for a long, long time. Yeah. Right? Back in the data portability days, when you, you got kicked off Facebook for scraping your own contacts out. Yeah. Right? It's like Open ultimately wins, right? And so yeah. I'm, I'm really psyched about the stuff you guys are doing with OpenStack. And I, and I think you're right. It's, it gives you the flexibility and freedom to, to do what the heck we need to do uh, in the mix. So that's, I'm, I'm glad the word Open is in your tagline. Well, <laughs> cloud, cloud works really well when your traffic is spiky. Right, and yep. that's why a lot of your stuff is on cloud because you're on the WWP, right. and they have an event, and the traffic spikes, right, and then it goes yeah. down. But at, at your scale, when you have so many customers, your traffic starts going like this and smooths out, and yep. then it's cheaper to host it on your own data center, right? Hey, hey, Rackspace is not for everybody or everything, right? I hear you can negotiate when you get bigger. And yeah. Yeah. You certainly can. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have uh, Adobe, right? Adobe opens and closes 20,000 instances an hour, or cl cloud uh, VM, wow. v virtual machines. Yeah. That's incredible. It takes six <laughs> seconds for them to start up a new machine right. and put yeah. something into it. And then uh, when they're done, they shut it off and, yeah. and go yeah. on to the next thing. I ultimately think you don't build your own data center. Um, yes, you may need some localized CPUs because your service provider doesn't have them, but our IP is not in setting up servers, right? And it's the same message we say to our customers. Uh, their expertise is not in setting up a React, <coughs> no SQL, you know, database and, and building APIs, et cetera, et cetera. It's sports. So they come to Echo instead of dealing with the complexity of real time. It's not that they couldn't do it. It's where is their time best spent? Is it around crafting an experience around sports, or is it in building infrastructure? And ultimately, that's the echo pitch, right? If you want state-of-the-art, real-time applications, you start with the experience on top of echo. And so in a way, you have a company like Rackspace providing deep infrastructure, and then on top of that, Echo is an application development environment where you build applications against your brand. Now, totally great advice. Most <coughs> businesses around the world don't have geeks like Chris Saad, <laughs> who can go out and build, a, you know, and understand how to how to build Node.js, or you know, write Node.js, or build a real time system that'll do stuff. I mean, those people are expensive. They're hard to find and they're hard to manage. And it's not your job. It's your job is to go and run Procter and Gamble or something else, right? That's right. In, in fact, I, just for fun, I would take that conversation even further. That you are you're moving to a global economy that it will essentially be based on APIs, and so companies themselves, like a CNN, currently known for you know top quality news and all of that sort of thing, underneath it has business processes like serving content or video or what ha or production that they, at some point in time, will add an API to, so that even their competitors might say, am I really uh, in the video compression distribution business, or am I really in news in Greece? And if that's the case, that you could see them literally buying that service from a CNN, 
and I think the entire web, uh, the entire web, and the entire global economy will go to APIs. And this beginning notion that we're doing well, right now with, say, a rack space, that's why I'm saying I would never build the data center. I think we're not going away from those things. We're going more towards uh, a, a world of APIs. I, I agree with that. It, mm -hmm. It's just there are some places where the costs do do get to the scale where you want to build your own team and your own servers and all yeah, that. I, not, I, not, to, not to disagree with it, but I, I disagree with it because, <laughs> because the, the... I love it because the rack space <laughs> people are probably going, what? <laughs> you know? No, no you, you, here's why. Yeah. Because the, the third party that is uh, commoditizing a specific API endpoint, say compute, yeah. is also going to be growing and scaling and reducing costs and putting in tools and adding new features. So no, we're going to hire that 17 year old kid that was just here. I love yeah. that. I want did, one of those things. That did, was, you see, did you see I know, what he's doing? It looked he's, like the robot in Lost in Space. It was, well, <laughs> well, he's building a data center out of ARM chips, which is going to be, be easier to, call, uh, cheaper, right? That kid is going to build the next rack space and that kid is going to find a way to make everything not just cheaper, but yeah. open up new possibilities. I mean, look, look at it. There's a homeless guy that tried to sell me a data center out front. That was our chairman. That was the sorry, that was, that was Rocky, I think. <laughs> he, he likes to dress uh, you know, casually. <laughs> no, it's, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> so, sorry about that. I was like, wow. Anywho. <laughs> no, but it, it, there's something there. It, yeah. That's why, you know, Adobe, is opening up and closing 20,000 VMs an hour now. Yep. They, that was physically impossible 10 years ago. Right, you, that's beautiful. You know, it's imagine beautiful. trying to build a, a data center with 10,000 machines in it, no, no, or, no. you know, and make yeah. it yeah. work. Well, it just, it just hidden, wouldn't be possible. The, hidden, the savings you, you think you're going to make will be far outweighed by the hidden costs and complexity and distraction of yeah. trying to go build that thing yourself. Yeah. I, and I, so I, I, I totally agree with Chris funny enough, but yeah, the world will be delivered <laughs> as APIs, uh, well, and p you each become experts and in And Red Bull, business. you know, is using encoding.com to do video Absolutely. compression, That's right, which yeah. is a Rackspace customer, thank yeah. you. And so they're using Rackspace, so they're not trying to do it themselves, and right. that's Red Bull with 500 people on a media team. Right. Rackspace only has two people on a media yeah. team, right? What, what, Rocky. what happened, <laughs> what I like to call that problem is the innovator's dilemma. Yeah. So you can get a company that will build it all in-house, and they will get a very small window of advantage against their competitors but very quickly there will be a commoditized version of that in-house product yeah. and the in-house team is, is essentially screwed. They're stuck with their own tech, right? And so uh, it's not a question ever of build or buy. It should always be partner. Unless it's your core, core, core IP, you should be partnering for it. And, uh, and I hope that, that phrasing of build or buy actually moves away. Um, I know in our own company, for example, we were the first to develop um, Facebook, Twitter, Google, and AOL authentication, right? We had it in-house. We were written up by you know, all the magazines and what have you. And then as that tech got commoditized, we immediately created an open standard called Backplane, and we partnered with Jan Rain, yeah. and we shit-canned all of our authentication technology. It wasn't because we couldn't do it, it was we were not those engineers needed to be on our core database, not fixing Facebook Connect problems. And so those partnerships at every level, you should consider, is this the week that I cannibalize my own technology and push myself up the stack? It's great insight, and I'm glad you came by. Yeah. I could talk to you guys for hours, and probably will tonight. Right? <laughs> we're, we're, how many parties are you going to hit tonight? Oh, I don't know. Probably go home, read, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll see, see you out at 3 in the morning stumbling around <laughs> the streets. <laughs> the networking is off the hook, by the way. I, I stumbled into the door at 3.30 in the morning. There was a whole group out front, out in the front. Andrew Hyde was out there. I mean, just incredible people. We, we, have, uh, we rented a villa yeah. uh, right outside of uh, town here, and we've had people that come to the party at 3 or 4 in the morning. I mean, it's just, this town is buzzing right now. If you're not at South By, come here next year. It's yeah. really fun. It has not jumped anything. It's become more <laughs> well, fun it, and more interesting. It has morphed. It, it's certainly it's not what it, yeah. it, what it was. And if, so if you hang on to things as they were, you miss Then that, you're stuck, right, yeah. You miss right. that there's something new in the future, you know? That's right. and I, it's I, the I like new the Robert Scoble, right? Yeah, 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 exactly, man. <laughs> so, who's, so who are you? <laughs> uh, don't even start, man. Me too, baby. Don't All right. even start. <laughs> nice. Good hanging out with you, brother. Thanks, man. Yeah. And uh, where do we learn more about Echo? About 
aboutecho.com. Aboutecho.com. You can't st you still can't afford a real domain name? <laughs> <laughs> Something about a guy with a lawnmower, right? You know, yeah, echo or whatever. You know, yeah. It's old school. Four-letter domain name. That's probably, what, a million, mm. million and a half? Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to get some more funding or something for that. <laughs> Thanks. Anyway. Take care, mate. All right. So this gives you an idea of what we're doing. I have a whole stack of, p of people coming up before we close here at 5 o'clock. So let's get to it. Uh, we're going to shut down for a couple of minutes, get everybody re-miked, and we'll be right back here from the Rackspace Up and Cloud experience. Thanks for joining us. When Rackspace's live coverage from Austin continues, we'll show you the future in real time. Rackspace, backed by fanatical support, bringing you live coverage from South by Southwest daily. Hmm, so good, it hurts. The Open Cloud Experience.